So how does this take place? NHK is conducting an experiment with a group of researchers. The team will track particles in the air using laser beams and a high sensitivity camera. This technology allows us to detect droplets as small as 0.1 micrometers wide. The experiment starts. First, sneezing. <coughs> we can see a large droplet, about one millimeter in diameter. It quickly falls. But let's look through the high sensitivity camera. That's nasty. We can see small particles that seem to glitter floating through the air. These particles are all smaller than 10 micrometers or one one hundredth of a millimeter in diameter. Let's take a look from a different angle. They're small and light. You can see them drifting through the air. These are micro droplets. We're learning that sneezing isn't the only source of these droplets. We ran the same experiment on a close range conversation. People generate a lot of micro droplets when they talk loudly. The droplets between these two stay where they are. They don't drift away. It's not yet known what volume of micro droplets leads to infection. But Tatada says we can't rule out the possibility that micro droplets have spread the virus to some extent. Some micro droplets, small droplets, in the air, also have many kinds of viruses. There are loud voices, or loud behavior, and so on. In that situation, these micro droplets are created, and they are spread to people close to them. They are spread to them, and they are spread to them. This is a risk that has been seen. The risk of infection through micro droplets becomes even greater in a closed space with poor ventilation. This lab is simulating the movement of micro droplets in an airtight room. About 10 people in an enclosed space the size of a classroom. A person coughs once and spreads about 100,000 droplets. Large droplets are shown in blue and green. Most of these fall to the ground within one minute. But the micro droplets shown in red continue to drift. This simulation uses only micro droplets. Five minutes later, 10 minutes later. Twenty minutes later. The micro droplets are still floating in place. What? That's nasty. え、つまりこの流れがないということで、マイクロヒマツそのものはま、落ちたり、ま、違う場所に動くことができませんので、正直はその場所に留まるっていうことになります。But there is a way to prevent this stagnation of micro droplets. Opening windows and increasing air circulation is believed to be effective. When you open a window,
micro droplets are quickly swept away. They're very small and light, so any airflow will get rid of them. できればですね、2箇所開けて風の流れを作ってあげるということが大事。それがまあ1時間に1回でもいいから、そういうようなことをやることによって感染のリスクというのはかなり下げることができるようになるんじゃないかなというふうに思います。Vamos a simular un estornudo, presión de un desodorante que es menos que un estornudo. Pasa para este lado. Otro tipo de barbijo que están utilizando como friselina, tela que no debe ser usada para barbijo. Friselina de bolsa. Friselina común, tela simple. Simple friselina. Pasa. Barbijo quirúrgico, por ende los barbijos reglamentarios. No pasa. Otro tipo de barbijo quirúrgico, por ende barbijo reglamentario. Barrera, no pasa. Barbijo N95, reglamentario. No pasa. Por ende, si estornuda una persona que usa un barbijo y es un COVID positivo, no saldría. Y si yo me lo pongo usando un barbijo cualquiera de tela de friselina o común, no impido aspirar lo que la otra persona estornudaría o hablaría o, o salpicaría microgotículas. Por ende, no usen barbijos hechos de telas caseras. <risa>